So here we are asked to derive Heron's formula. So the first thing is I'm just going to start out with the area and I'm gonna write out the word area. And we're gonna say this is equal to, now we saw this formula earlier in the practice test and also again for the first part when we're talking about the law of sines. Let's say you had the length of side A and the length of side B and then also you had the measure of the included angle there which would be C. So you could say that the area is one half times the length of side A times the length of side B and then times the sine of the included angle. Again, this is going to be C, right? But specifically, this is the measure of angle C. I think we know that. And then what we would do here is start out by squaring both sides. So let me actually show this. So I'm gonna write area and then I'm gonna square that. And then I'm just gonna wrap this here. So one half times A times B times the sine of C and then I'm gonna square that. So we know how this works with multiplication. This exponent of two needs to be applied to each factor inside the parentheses. And I'm just gonna put equals over here. We know that this is area squared. I'm just getting a little room. So this would be one half being squared. So basically that is one fourth and then times A that's squared and then times B that's squared and then times, you could write the sine of C being squared as sine squared C. Okay, so at this point, what you're going to do is make a little substitution. We know that sine squared theta, forget about the fact that it's C for right now, sine squared theta is equal to one minus cosine squared theta. That comes from the sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals one. So it's just a different form. So I can replace this right here with one minus cosine squared C. So let's say that this is gonna be equal to one fourth times A squared times b squared and then times, I'm going to put this in parentheses, so one minus cosine squared c. Now, what we're gonna do from here is use our difference of squares formula to factor this. Remember, if you have a squared minus b squared, this is a plus b, this quantity, times the quantity a minus b like this, okay? So this is going to factor because you can think about this as one squared, right? One squared is just one. So let's go ahead and say that this is gonna be one fourth times a squared times b squared, and then times the quantity one minus the cosine of c, and then times the quantity one plus the cosine of c. So hopefully you're with me. All I did was factor this into this. So at this point, we need to go to another page because we need to figure out what is the cosine of C. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is solve for the cosine of C. I'm gonna use that law of cosines formula that involved the cosine of my angle C. So I'm gonna say that this is C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared, then minus two times A times B times the cosine of that angle C. So this right here is what I wanna solve for. And again, we did this multiple times in the practice test. So I'm just gonna subtract A squared away from each side and B squared away from each side. So that would give me C squared minus A squared minus B squared. And this would be equal to negative two AB and then times the cosine of C. Now what I'm gonna do is divide both sides by negative two AB. So let's do that over here as well. And what that is going to do for me, this is gonna cancel with this. And so I have the cosine of C isolated on one side. Now I like what I'm solving for to be on the left. You could leave it on the right if you wanted to, but I'm just going to flip the sides here. Remember that's completely legal. So I'm gonna say this is the cosine of C is equal to, I'll take this guy right here. And I'm actually gonna move this negative up here. So let's say this is the negative of, I'll put C squared minus A squared minus B squared like this close that down. I'll say this is over 2AB. So in case you're lost here, remember if you have a fraction like A over negative B, you could write this as the negative of A over B. So I just took this negative from the denominator, just like I did here, and moved it to the numerator. But remember, you have to distribute that negative to each term. So you can't just move it up in front of the C squared. It can't just be negative C squared minus A squared minus B squared. It has to be the negative of this whole thing. So let's get rid of this and let's distribute the negative and I'm going to rearrange things just a little bit. So I'll say that the cosine of C is equal to, this is gonna be negative C squared, then plus A squared and then plus B squared. Okay, so typically your book is gonna write this as A squared plus B squared and then minus C squared like this. So just staying consistent. And then this would be over your two A B. So what we're gonna do now is go back up and you see that we want one minus the cosine of C and then one plus the cosine of C. So we're gonna come back down and we're going to figure out, let me put this as a little border here. We need one plus the cosine of C and then we need one minus the cosine of C. All right, let's start by finding one plus the cosine of C and then we'll move on to one minus the cosine of C. Let me actually just grab this 
and copy this. Let me erase this and slide this down just a little bit. And all I'm gonna do is just add one to each side of this equation. And I'm just gonna manipulate the right side here. So let's say that this is equal to, for one, I'm gonna write that as 2AB over 2AB, just so that we have a common denominator. And let's say this is plus this guy over here. So A squared plus B squared, and then minus your C squared over 2AB. Now we have a common denominator, so I can add the two numerators together. And I'm gonna put this in a specific order and that's just so I can factor. So what's gonna happen is I'm gonna take the a squared first and then plus, now I'm gonna put the 2ab and then plus the b squared and then minus c squared. And this is all over 2ab. So hopefully you recognize this pattern right here. So we've seen this a million times in algebra. Let me come down here and I'll just write it out. If you have x plus y quantity squared, this is x squared, so the first guy squared, plus two times x times y. So you could say two times the first guy times the second guy, and then plus the last guy, which is y, that guy being squared. Okay, so that's the exact pattern you have here. You just have different letters involved. So I'm going to say that this is the quantity a plus b being squared. So let's replace this with the quantity a plus b being squared, and then minus c squared, and this is over 2a this step right here is going to lose a lot of people. So I'm going to do this in a different way to make it easy for everyone to understand. I'm going to make a substitution here. So we are going to say that we're going to let u be equal to a plus b. So this right here, I'm going to plug in a u. Okay, and you can drop the parentheses, you don't need them. So I'm going to say that this is u squared minus c squared, and this is over 2a B. So I think we can see that this is the difference of squares here. It's pretty easy. Let me actually keep dragging this down here. Okay, so we can remember that u is a plus b. Let's come down here. And then I'm going to say that this is equal to, I'm going to factor this. Again, this would be u plus c, and then times u minus c. And this is over 2ab. So again, u is equal to a plus b. So just plug that in there and plug that in there and you'll be done. So let's come down here and I'll say that this is going to be a plus b, and then plus c, and then times, you're going to have this quantity a plus b, and then minus c. This is all over 2ab. Okay, so this is going to be for 1 plus the cosine of c. So let me actually grab this result here. I'm just going to come to a fresh sheet here and put that this is 1 plus the cosine of c. So let's actually go back. So let's grab this again, and I'll come to another fresh sheet. So now I'm going to go 1 minus over here. And let me slide this down like this. And I'll put one minus over here. And then again, I'm just going to manipulate the right hand side here. So we're going to say that this is equal to, again, get a common denominator. So 2ab over 2ab, and then minus this guy right here. So a squared plus b squared minus c squared over 2ab. So this part is actually a lot more tricky just because of sign mistakes. So I'm just going to go through each sign mistake that you might make. The first one is this one. Remember, you're subtracting this whole thing away. So if you take this guy right here, this numerator, this 2ab, and you subtract away this guy right here, again, you wanna wrap this in parentheses so you don't make a sign mistake, right? So each term has to be subtracted away. So in other words, this would be minus a squared and then minus b squared and then plus c squared. So make sure you change the sign of each term. Then this is over your common denominator of 2ab. So that's the first part. Again, make sure you wrap this in parentheses, otherwise you're gonna make a sign mistake and you're gonna keep carrying that mistake throughout the rest of the problem. Let's come down here. And now this is the part where a lot of people struggle. You have to do something very similar to what you did in the last problem, but it's a little bit more challenging because it's harder to see what you're gonna do right away. So the first thing is you have this C squared, you're gonna to wanna to write that out in front. So let me just put equals, and I'm just gonna put C squared here. And then the next thing is, let me reorder this and say this is minus A squared, and then I'm gonna put plus two AB, and then I'm gonna put minus B squared, and this will all be over two AB. When you look at this as it is, you don't see something that's a pattern that you're used to for factoring. So if you think about something like, let's say a squared minus two ab and then plus b squared, well, we know if we had that, this would factor into a minus b quantity squared. Now, can I get to this here? 
Yes. And the way you know that is this sign is opposite of this one, this sign is opposite of this one, and this sign is opposite of this one. If all the signs are opposite of what you need, then you could just factor out a negative one and get there. So let me go really slow here because this is where a lot of people get lost. So let me go C squared. I'm just going to go plus and I'm going to put a negative one like this so it's crystal clear. Maybe I'll use brackets here. Now, if I'm pulling out a negative one from here, that just means all the signs are going to change. So instead of a negative A squared, it's A squared. Instead of a plus 2AB, it's minus 2AB. And then instead of a minus B squared, it's plus B squared. Again, if you go through and distribute the negative one to each, I'm going to get right back to where I was. So this is completely legal. Let me change this up just a little bit for formatting. Instead of plus this negative one, let's just make this into a minus. Instead of brackets, let's just use parentheses like this. And now this is over 2AB. We know that this factors. So let's say this is C squared minus the quantity A minus B being squared over 2AB. Okay, so now again, we have the difference of squares. Let me come to a fresh sheet here. So we have a lot of rum. Again, my recommendation is if you're struggling with this, just use something like a substitution technique. So you can let U or Z or W or whatever you want to use. Let's just use U be equal to A minus B. So in this place right here, you're going to plug in a U and you can just drop the parentheses. So we'll say that this is C squared minus U squared over 2AB. So now let me put equals over here. Let me come down and I'm actually going to drag this with me so we remember. So let's put equals. We know this would factor into C plus U and then times C minus U. And this is over 2A. B. Now you have to be very careful here as to not make a sign mistake. What's going to happen is this right here is going to get plugged in here and then also here. Let's come down here real quick and we're going to say that this equals, you can have in parentheses C plus, now you have A minus B. You could wrap this if you wanted to like this and close this down, but we know a plus sign in front of parentheses, you could just drop the parentheses. So this becomes C plus A minus B. That's very straightforward. So for this one, you have C minus. Now here's where it gets tricky. You want to subtract away the whole thing because U is A minus B. So I need to subtract away both of those guys. So you can wrap this in parentheses to make this clear. So minus the quantity A minus B like this, close that down. So this becomes a negative A and a plus B. So this right here is the factored form. This would be over 2AB. So let's grab this real quick. And let's paste this in here. So I'm going to put one minus the cosine of C is equal to this. So we're going to return here. Remember the left side is the area squared. So you can write that again if you need to. But basically you're going to plug in for one minus the cosine of C. And you're going to plug in for one plus the cosine of C. I've got to write this as small as I can. And I'm not really good at that. So let me come all the way over here and say this is one fourth times A squared times B squared. Then times for one minus the cosine of C. Again, that's going to be this guy right here. So let me grab that. And let me paste this in here and I'll just copy it so it's smaller. So I'll put times the quantity C plus A minus B times the quantity C minus A and then plus B like this. And this is over 2AB. Okay, let me get rid of this. The other one we have to grab is one plus the cosine of C. So that's going to be this one. So let's go times. And I'm going to say this is the quantity A plus B plus C. Then times the quantity A plus B minus C. This is all over 2A. I'm actually going to grab this and just go to a fresh sheet just so we have a lot of room. So let's paste this in right here. Remember the left side here is the area squared. I don't have room to write that, but hopefully you have that in your notes. The first thing you're going to do here is realize that this is all multiplication. So this is multiplied by this, multiplied by this, multiplied by this, multiplied by this. So basically A would be multiplied by A down here, right, in your denominators, and you would have A squared. Now you could cancel that with this A squared here. So this would cancel with this and this. And then the B squared similarly would cancel with this and this, right, B times B is B squared. All right, now the next part might be a little bit confusing, but I want you to remember that this is just straight multiplication. So in other words, in the numerator, you have one times this quantity, times this quantity, times this quantity, times this quantity. In the denominator, you have four times two times two. So I know the denominator is 16, but they're going to break that up into four factors of two. So in other words, you're going to take each one of these guys and write it over two. So let me show you, we're going to start with this A plus B plus C. So that one's going to go first. Let me put equals over here. So A plus B plus C, and I'm going to put this over too, and then times. The next one I'm going to do to stay consistent with the book, I'm going to use this one here. Remember, you can multiply in any order, so this doesn't matter. 
I'm gonna go C minus A plus B like this, and this will be over two, and then times, and I think I'm writing this too big, so let me actually slide this down a little bit here. So C minus A plus B over two, and then times the next guy, I'm gonna use this one. So this would be C plus A minus B over two, and then the last guy, it's gonna be this one. So it's gonna be A plus B minus C over two. Again, I haven't done anything illegal. You can pause and think about it. The denominator is gonna be two times two times two times two, which is gonna be 16. Down here, if you look at it, it's four times two times two, which is 16. And the numerator, again, it's just the product of these quantities. Up here, it's the exact same thing. So we haven't done anything illegal. We've just broken it up in such a way that we're gonna be able to get to our formula. Now we know that from Heron's formula, the semi-perimeter S is equal to this a plus b plus c divided by two. So here I can just replace that with s. So let me get rid of this and come down here a little bit. And I'll say this is equal to s. Now, we have this times this guy right here. What you're going to want to do is write that as the quantity s minus a, right? So you're going to want to put this as s minus a, and you're going to want to put this as s minus b, and you're going to want to put this as the quantity s minus c. Now, where does that come from? Let me show you on one of them, and then you can get the other ones on your own if you want. I'm just going to take this one, and it's just a very simple trick. Let's say you had c minus a plus b, and this is over 2. Well, the first thing is I need to get s. So in other words, let me come down here. I'll come back up in a moment. I need to get to the point where I have a plus b plus c. So what could I do legally? Well, I could add 2a up here. But the problem is that's illegal, right? I can't just add 2a to something. So to fix that, I'm just going to subtract 2a away. So what would happen? Negative a plus 2a would be a. So what I could do is say that this is a plus b plus c. And then again, this negative a plus 2a, that's how I got the a over there. So now I'm just left with, let me write this in a different color, minus 2 a. Now, this is all over the common denominator of 2. So what you can do here is split this up and say that this is a plus b plus c over the common denominator of 2. So a plus b plus c over 2, and then minus 2a over 2. Remember, if you combine these guys, you have a common denominator, you would go right back to this form right here. So this is legal. So this would cancel with this. And so what I have is this a plus b plus c over 2, which is s, and then minus a. Okay, so that's where that's coming from. And we'll come back down here. So you see where the S minus A came from. And you can use a similar strategy to get this as S minus B and this as S minus C. Okay, so that's all it's going to be. So S times your quantity S minus A times your quantity S minus B times your quantity S minus C. Now, if you remember from a long time ago, way up there, we said that area squared was equal to, and we've gotten this to this. So this is area squared is equal to this guy. And let me just paste that in there. So how do we get the area? We just take the square root. So the area would be equal to, again, we don't need the negative square root. We just want the principal. So the principal square root of this guy, let me paste this back in. So this is our Heron's formula, and that's where it comes from. It's quite long, and there's a lot of different ways that you can derive it. But I think this is the easiest one to follow. As long as you're really careful and you pay attention to the signs, I think that you're pretty much good to go with this guy. So the area is equal to the square root of S, which again is that semi-perimeter, that A plus B plus C divided by 2, times the quantity S minus A, times the quantity S minus B, times the quantity S minus C.